okay yeah so this is where uh, uh, we were so the centrifugal compressor the information is given so let us first draw the uh, control volume of the centrifugal compressor with the given information okay so i have a inlet condition with p01 and p01 given in the problem and outlet condition t02 and p02 is given in the problem and the properties of air is given gamma 1.4 cp 1005 joules per kg kelvin right so now they are asking the loss due to non isentropic work so if i look at my efficiency formula how do we define it we define it to be work done in an ideal way to work done in actual way so what does it actually says us it actually quantifies how much of work you are able to extract out of the all the available work you could have extracted right so that is nothing but this is a parameter which quantify the loss right so if i draw the ts diagram it will be much more obvious like we can easily see how much of loss we are actually expecting have a ts curve I have P not one, and I have P not two, and uh, state one. This one. P not one. From here, this is going to be my S one is equal to constant line, but the actual process is taking somewhere like this. So this is my. P not two, so this is the point where I would have expected the same pressure rise if this is operating in ideal way. So this is T not two dash. So now look at T not two minus T not one is actual. Uh, it it quantifies the actual work, whereas T not two dash minus T not one quantifies the ideal work. So what is the loss then? So whatever is here between T not two dash to T not two. that is the loss right due to non isentropic process the non isentropic process brings in the rise in total and uh, rise in entropy of the system <coughs> so this is the part we have to actually calculate that is what asked in the question <coughs> so that means loss is nothing but w actual minus w ideal so that is what we are going to calculate now so what is w actual that is cp t02 minus t01 minus cp t02 dash minus t01 so i can take cp common so that is going to be t02 minus t01 minus t02 dash minus of minus that is plus t01 right so now t02 t01 and uh, other cp are known to us only t02 dash is unknown 
either i can directly calculate over here or you can calculate from the isentropic relation that is p not 2 by p not 1 to the power of gamma minus 1 by gamma which is equal to t not 2 dash divided by t not 1 from here you can calculate t not 2 dash and you can keep it over here or you can take t not 1 outside here so that gives you t not 1 minus t not 1 if i take common so that gives me t not 2 dash divided by t not 1 minus 1 so this can be represented again as p not 2 by p not 1 to the power of gamma minus 1 by gamma you can calculate it so you keep all the information given in the question you should be able to get the loss in the work done due to non isentropic process is 20.902 Kilo joules per kg. So, yeah. So, you can keep 20.90, it's enough, two digit, or if you want to keep, you can also keep the third digit. Clear, right? Okay. Let us move to the next question. Hot gas with the ratio of specific heats is uh, 1.33 at a temperature of 1450 Kelvin enters into an axial turbine and expands isentropically. Assume that kinetic energy of the gas across the turbine is negligible. If the ratio of the inlet to outlet pressure of the turbine is 9.5, then the temperature in Kelvin of the gas exiting the turbine is. So in this year, like I can see, like most of the questions are framed out of TS diagrams. Like if you understood the TS diagram, so you can crack many of these questions easily. Right. So this is also again the straightforward question. What are the keywords we have here? is like in an axial turbine which expands isentropically what do they mean that means the efficiency of the turbine is 100 percent so that is the first hidden information and they are given the ratio of the inlet to outlet pressure so they are given p naught 3 divided by p naught 4 as 9.5 so that is another information usually we calculate from p naught 4 by p naught 3 kind of way but they are given in the other way it's fine in the outlet because they are specific so they are given the inlet stagnation temperature p naught 3 1450 Kelvin. They are asking you to calculate what is T04. So it's very straightforward. If I have a TS diagram, so I have a turbine from this pressure to this pressure, it is expanding P03 to P04. How it is expanding? It's expanding isentropically. So there is no entropy rise so that means i have t03 here so i will be having it is expanding to t04 so i can both of them falls on the constant entropy line so i can use isentropic relation that is p03 divided by p04 will be equal to t03 divided by t04 to the power of gamma by gamma minus 1 or if I want to write it for T naught 4 that is equal to T naught 3 times P naught 4 divided by P naught 3 to the power of gamma minus 1 by gamma. So you keep all the information so that is T naught 3 is 1450 
P naught four by P naught three is one divided by nine point five to the power of gamma is one point three three. So that is going to be point three three divided by one point three three. So if you calculate all this information, so you should be able to get P naught four as eight hundred and twenty nine point four two. Go to Kelvin. So can keep that answer over here. So everybody clear? Okay. So this ends our discussion on two thousand fifteen gate jet propulsion part questions. So thank you for attending this session. If you guys have any doubts, you can pitch in, or we can wind up this session.